Back in 1999, uh, German national television sent over a film crew from Germany uh, and, and did a, <clears throat> a, an hour show on me. And the, the show was basically, and it was all translated into German. I, I have a copy of it, but, uh, and, but uh, the show was basically, they were asking me, what did I think was going to happen with Y2K? Uh, and this was in 90, 1999. It was going to be shown in the last part of 1999. And I basically said back then, concerning Y2K, <clears throat> that nothing was going to happen. That, uh, that the only thing that might change was that football might come on on uh, Monday night instead of Sunday night, <laughs> and that uh, the taxes will for sure go up, and the rich will get richer, and the poor will get poorer. But basically, nothing's going to change. Uh, and I thought, and I said that I think that this hype about Y2K is probably being orchestrated by NSA, National Security Administration, and or the CIA, uh, just to see how. Uh, gullible the American public is, and to see how much uh, of a of an impact the CIA can make on society, to see if they can get society you know all riled up about something. And uh, so I said, basically, I don't see anything happening for Y2K at all, nothing. And that was my same feeling. I've I've been on a couple of shows just before uh, December, and I said the same thing. I didn't think anything was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> I think that everybody is looking in the wrong place. I think some momentous things have happened, but uh, but you know December 21st was not it. <clears throat> I think some terrible, horrible things have happened, but uh, uh, the end of the world. I don't think uh, you know. I don't. I understand what the the concepts of the end of the world, the end of time, and all that kind of thing. But most of that is all fluff and religion. And and as far as I'm concerned, this last stuff was going on about the Mayan calendar. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there was a lot of CIA handiwork in that, just to stir up the the pot a little bit and scare people a little more, keep them keep them occupied. I remember many years ago hearing a lady who was an official with the Democratic Party, and she was um, telling us that um, that she taught people <clears throat> and that she was taught and then she turned around was teaching new people coming into the Democratic Party as officials that you must always, uh, it was an idea the Democratic Party said you must always have a crisis uh, coming. You must always have something that's, that's the imminent, some terrible crisis is going to happen uh, because it keeps the people on their toes, keeps people agitated, yeah. and, uh, and and keeps them off off balance because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So they they can't get organized. They can't uh, you know live in peace and prosperity and and quietness so that they can think and plan and understand what's going on. Just keep them occupied with worrying themselves sick about the end, about the media's going to hit, or comments going to hit, or world war, or something. Keep them occupied so that they're always concerned. And that way they don't have time to sit down quietly and just think about what's actually going on. And so um, I, I, I kind of figured that anyway, but hearing her talk about that, <clears throat> so that's that's pretty much what I feel is going on all the time is, we're just being played for fools, and um, yeah, you, uh, and the, you're right, Jordan. I mean, I mean, this idea is, is very important to mention that we can see that ref reflected in many different movements. But uh, oh, yeah. the green movement, oh, yeah. for example, it's very much about don't think, don't, don't, don't. We have to act now. We cannot. This is not the time to argue about what's going on, you know, because then we would, of course, discover what really is going on. <laughs> it's. <Of course. laughs> Yeah, and you know, and I remember when I was growing up, I used to always hear, uh, well, there are two things that we don't talk about in polite company, and that's religion and politics. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, and I I always thought to myself, why? Those are the two things that that cause people to do the things they do. 
as religion and politics. Why not talk about the religion and politics? Because those are the two things that motivate the world. Well, now, of course, I understand why we don't talk about religion and politics, because one, uh, it, it might cause people to start thinking, and God knows we don't want that. And two, uh, we don't want people even discussing such issues. And so that's why we're given plenty of in, uh, entertainment and ball games and all kinds of uh, you know computer games and just entertainment galore. We've got all kinds of entertainment and distractions so that people don't sit down too long in one place and start thinking too deeply about anything. So, so it's pretty obvious. It is pretty obvious, and and I wonder how much of these things are, uh, you know, psyops, if we can call them that, or they're they're dropped in into our into the mass consciousness in different things. I mean, I'm thinking back of this article the NASA released uh, in, in, back in the 70s, I think it was, about Planet X. There was a brown dwarf, uh, you, you know, st star somewhere out there swirling around. And I just wonder how much that, of course, contributed to the whole Planet X movement, for example. Um, well, I, I know you're right. That's exactly right. Because uh, all that kind of stuff, every time you turn around, it's something. Some, some terrible tragedy is coming on the Earth and and the only real tragedy is that uh, the American people collectively have got an IQ of 40. That's the only real tragedy. And nobody's questioning anything. There's a real tragedy there. That's right. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of horrible things that have happened, but, uh, you know, December 21st wasn't one of them. Now, what if we look at the deeper aspects of that, uh, obviously the, the most important point is what you just kind of mentioned, that, that people are occupied, we're being... Uh, entertained for for different reasons, we are not allowed to settle down and think for ourselves. Of course, if we did take personal responsibility, we could just uh, you know turn off the TV or even turn off the internet in these days, um, and and try to find uh, some some real truth, some real uh, balance. We we know that we're being played on different ways, but how do you do? How do you manage the balance between the curiosity of want to try to find out what really is going on? Hence, you have to watch the news, you have to watch the web, but at the same time kind of keep your distance to it. I think this is something that's very difficult for people, Jordan. Well, it, it, <clears throat> for me it's fairly easy because I'm used to it, only because I've been doing that same thing for so many years. I always keep in mind that anything that you hear on television or in the newspapers or magazines and the media in America, whatever it is, it's most likely a lie. Uh, I remember on ABC uh, Network Radio many, many years ago, uh, a, a very famous uh, talk show host uh, who was also a journalist, he made an interesting statement and it stuck with me all, uh, for years. He said, if you want to know how corrupt and lying uh, the United uh, uh, American media is now. This is a guy on ABC Network uh, as a talk show host, and he said, "If you want to know how corrupt and lying and trickery is uh, is going on in the news departments of, on on the networks," he said, "Just wait till they do a a story on you. Wait till you're involved in something that the news people come in." And they will be reporting something, you know, on television and radio and in the magazines concerning something you were involved in. Yeah. And this way you will know because you were there and you were involved in it. Now read what they said happened as opposed to what you know damn well happened. That's right. And he said, then you will see how corrupt the news media really is. Wait till they do a story on you. Yeah, isn't that the truth? I've, I've been involved <laughs> maybe in two, three cases where I've actually witnessed something firsthand and then, uh, you know, seen afterwards how the media portrayed it. And it's been That's wrong it. in every case, wrong in every... And you hear that from people all the time as well. They didn't get yeah, a thing right, I, you know. <laughs> That's why I say it's a, it's a wonderful quality consistency to be wrong all the time. <laughs> and can't be wrong all the time by chance. You've got to be wrong all the time because that's what you're in business to do is distort the news, period. That's what news services are there to do, to distort the news, to distort 
what's going on to keep the people agitated, ignorant, and ill-informed, and uh, therefore you can control them. Uh, it's very simple. I mean, if I were going to be a dictator, I would want people educated. My God, I mean, uh, if if people are smarter than you are, why why would you even bother to try and be a dictator over people who are brighter than you are and smarter than you are? Yeah. Instead of be a dictator, make sure everyone in town has an IQ of 40. Do whatever you have to do to keep people stupid, ignorant, on drugs, alcohol, you know, whatever. Keep them busy, and especially uh, keep them occupied with games. Give them a ball game, or you know, and then you start thinking about that. We have soccer ball, baseball, football, tennis, golf ball, uh, you know, all the ball games. Uh, is this is what you do for kids, children. That's you know, right. If, if, kids are, if the kids are in your way, you just tell the kids, go out and play. And all over the world, always you say, go out and play with a ball. Go out and play ball. And we even say that in, in business and in commerce. You know, when you're working for a corporation, uh, they call you in and, uh, you know, and they say, you know, are you on the team? Are we here? You're not playing ball. And so these terms have come to be even accepted in business. You're a team player, and uh, and and they want you to play ball. <clears throat> so I've 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 come to the point where I I've just kind of dropped out of society. I, I see what's going on, and I've been watching it for over 53 years now and talking about it. So I understand what, where we are now and where we're going. I just think it's really, really horrible that young people are not told anything. They're not given the opportunity to know what's going on, where they're going, where they've come from. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't, you know, I, it's very difficult for me to be um, to be um, optimistic about the future because mm -hmm. I know t I know too much. I've been to been through too much. I've seen too much, and I've been privy to hear things and see things that other people will not ever even know exist. And it's very, very frightening what the future holds for the human race. So we're watching it all happening right now. Do you think that there is, uh, do you see any any way out of this? Um, I mean, I've, I've always think, thought that the... The way things are now, basically, the system will, will have to have to collapse and crumble. We have to we have to walk away from it and just let it fall, and then maybe something uh, more authentic could kind of rise in its place. And that's a potential I, positive. I totally believe that. Yeah. Yes, because and the reason why I say that is because when you see, uh, like when Obama was uh, the night Obama was elected, all over the world people were dancing in the streets, <laughs> dancing the street yeah. and there were tears uh, in the eyes of young people dancing and and crying and weeping and uh, it was just an incredible uh, display of ignorance stupidity and profound goofiness uh, uh, worship a hero worship and I'm sorry to interrupt I wonder how much of that also was a, a you know planted people that were paid to share oh, and everything sure. <laughs> Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that a lot of that was planted, and um, uh, you know, but you know, like the the philosopher said, for those who will not learn from history, you're bound to repeat it. Yep. And so that's what we're doing now in America. We're repeating, and also there was another quote in history. I don't know who made it, but um, it was during World War II. Uh, it said, "America has become what we beheld." That's an interesting idea and a quote. America has become what we beheld, meaning that uh, uh, during the Second World War, we were involved in watching the murder and violence and chaos and, and incredible scenes of, of, of violence all over the world. And so we got used to it. And so now that's us. We, we now become that which we uh, beheld. We are now doing it ourselves. So all the stuff that we saw Adolf Hitler doing in, in Europe, uh, we are now doing here. All the things that we saw the Russians and the communists doing in the Soviet Union, 
we're now doing here. All the stuff that we see the mafia doing and the organized crime and the underworld, we're now doing it here. So every time, you know, we learn, we just sit and watch things happen and then we go out and mimic it. So uh, I, 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 it's just amazing how much we, you know, the more we change, the more we stay the same. Yeah. We don't seem to learn from anything. We don't seem to learn. And I will tell you what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to see the collapse of, of Western civilization. Mm -hmm. And not the first time it's happened, and it will not be the last. But it's going to be very, very bad when it does happen. Uh, and, let, let me uh, ask you this, Jordan, about that, because... Again, this people immediately think to, um, you know, doomsday about that again, of course, and, and they think, oh, there's something's going to happen overnight, basically. But as uh, same thing has happened with the Roman Empire. This was prolonged over a couple of hundred years, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time, in other words, for something to That's crumble right. and fall. Right. It's little by little by little, uh, and you begin to see it uh, if you know what you're looking for. And that's why most people don't see what's going on, because they're not looking for it. I already know what to look for. When I started, when the one thing you need to always look for in a decaying civilization, when an empire is in decline, the first thing you notice is that uh, uh, the majority of the people begin to lose their humanity. Uh, and, and I'm watching that among Americans. Today, uh, wherever you go in America, people have lost their humanity. They don't even know how to think anymore. Uh, and, and like Gore Vidal used to say, and I totally agree with him, he said, welcome to the United States of incompetency. And that's exactly what's going on. Our, our people of America have become incompetent, downright stupid in many cases, can't even uh, figure out what's going on. They see uh, three high-rises fall down into dust, and they think that's just normal. That's what high-rises do. They always do that. They've always done that. And they don't realize there's never been a time in human history when three high-rises, any high-rises, ever fallen down into dust. Um, and so it shows me, and also another classic example of what I'm talking about is law enforcement. There used to be a time when the police were just like uh, like us. It was just regular working class people that were police officers. Today, uh, among the police across the nation, it's like a police state mentality. It's a them against us, and they have uh, you know they have uh, riot gear and uh, automatic weapons, and they are heavily heavily. Uh, you know, dressed for war, uh, and that's part of uh, it's part of the the uh, humanizing of the human race. The uh, the whole entire superstructure of Christian civilization is collapsing, and it's collapsing for for many different reasons. And uh, one is that the superstructure of religion in the Western world was always corrupt. It never was a time when religion was, was legitimately uh, spiritual. It was always a political establishment. Yep. Uh, the Catholic Church, I think, has tried, tried its best to, to prove that in your face with their inquisitions and murder and violence and mayhem and uh, torture and killing and murdering across Europe. That's right. It's funny to me, Jordan, hearing, um, you know, what... what foreigners um in in sweden from sweden and what foreigners say is about you know the vikings and all that that they were uh you know horrible uh, murderer uh you know people that were traveling around and butchering everybody else and all that uh but, but the roman the roman empire the roman uh, church is like uh it's the saint in, in God, the, the roman church scared the hell out of uh, the vikings I that's mean, right yeah because <laughs> the vikings were uh were a people but uh but they were a people while the Vatican is a corporation, they're a business. That's what they do for a living. Uh, and so, and they are all over the world. And so when you start doing research into uh, the connections behind the scenes with the Communist Party and the Vatican, very, very heavily connected 
and the Nazi movement, very heavily connected to uh, to the Vatican. And, of course, corporate law, maritime admiralty, international business, and international business law, corporate law, all of that can be traced back to the Vatican. I've said before that uh, that for, two thousand, for about 2,300 years, Rome has dominated Europe. First of all, obviously, under the Caesars. And then with the fall of the Roman Empire in probably about the 5th century A.D., with the fall of the Roman Empire, the Vatican picked up the slack and continued to uh, carry on the work of the Roman Empire uh, and, and, uh, and the papacy was still Rome dominating Europe. And so for 1,600 years or so, Rome has dominated Europe and the, under the Vatican, and totally Rome has dominated Europe for about 2,300 years. Now that's important because for 2,300 years, uh, Europe has dominated the whole world. Yeah. Europe has dominated the planet. So therefore, that's where we get the idea of all roads lead to Rome. Because Rome has dominated Europe for 2,300 years, and Europe's dominated the earth for 2,300 years. So therefore, all of the, the racism and violence and wars and bloodshed and corruption and degeneracy uh, can all be traced back to Rome. It all goes back to Rome. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, there is some very important things in the Bible, in the New Testament. I don't condemn the Bible, and I don't condemn, condemn spirituality. I condemn corporate uh, religion, but I have a very high uh, respect for spiritual things, and especially for the concept of God. I don't have any problem believing in a divine presence in the universe that men have called God. I don't have any present, uh, any problems whatsoever with believing in God. I have a problem with uh, the corporate religions who claim to know uh, uh, God. So that's yeah. my claim. But uh, when you when you look at uh, what uh, one of the best, uh, one of the most most interesting quotes from Jesus was uh, someone came to, in the story, someone came to Jesus and had a seed, and they asked him, what kind of a seed is this? And he said, put it into the ground, water it, let it grow, and later on, if, it's, uh, if, it, if you find it was an apple tree grew, well, I guess it was an apple seed. And if it was a pear tree came up, well, I guess it was a pear seed. So therefore, the principle is, by their fruits you shall know them. Mm. Therefore, I would then take that and say, well, what is the fruitage of the three major religions of the book? Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all rely on a book. So they're called the people of the book. So what is the, uh, what is the fruitage of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam? What is the fruitage? For the past 2,000 uh, 2,500 years, what is the fruitage of those three major religions? We'll look all over the world and you will see the fruitage of those three religions. Nothing but violence, pornography, drugs running, world wars, killings, murder. Uh, it's just uh, the whole civilization is out of control. Well, that's the fruitage of, uh, of those three religions. So as far as I'm concerned, the three religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, are nothing more than the, the work of secret societies. I do believe that there is uh, some very valuable information and material in the Bible and, uh, and also in the New Testament story. I mean, when we get into that, uh, that's a whole other story. I mean, it's a whole other subject R right, that I am very, very interested in, uh, in the symbolism and the metaphors in the New Testament. Well, that's a whole different subject. Definitely, we might get an opportunity to get back to that a little bit later. I wanted to ask you about what some people argue is that what they claim what we see in the world today is not a product of religion, but it's because people have turned away from religion. They try to argue that it's an occult force in the world, and if, if people only turned back to the Bible, uh, you know, things would be would be good. What would you say to that? 
Well, two things. Um, I understand that thinking, but I'm saying if, if the religion that you have is not based on truth to start with, then it's going to fall down and break down somewhere. It's going to fall apart sometime, somewhere. It's going to begin to uh, erode and fall apart if it's not based on truth and, and factual truth. And if it's not based on spirituality, if it's based on politics, and so so much of what we call Judaism and Christianity and Islam are more political than they are anything else. And my mother used to say that all the time. There's never been a political movement uh, that wasn't a little religious, and there's never been a religious movement that wasn't a little political. So. I believe those three major religions, uh, to begin with, were were based on on uh, incorrect assumptions, were based on uh, manipulation of the people politically for social ends, and had nothing to do with spirituality. Christianity has little to nothing to do with spirituality at all. Judaism has a, has a little bit to do with spirituality, but it's all the occult stuff. And, uh, and Islam, in my opinion, has nothing to do with anything. It's just an incredible monstrosity. But, uh, so I don't see that the three religions have a legitimate spiritual basis for even being here on the earth at all. They, they, they serve no spiritual purpose at all. And so therefore, um, uh, you know, uh, therefore, the the religion of those three religions have really not offered the human race anything dependable, anything that's concrete. It's a uh, it's a religion. So I I see a very very big difference between religion and spirituality. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Now I wanted to return to a point you mentioned before. You you talked about well, you know, secret societies and and subversive and also revolutionary. Uh, movements that they, you know, might have been guided from Rome, basically. And I want to get your take on the uh, the Occupy movement. You've no doubt seen all the, uh, the seen Anonymous. Yeah. They adopted the Guy Fox mask, who was, of course, a Jesuit uh, uh, trained uh, man who tried to burn down the uh, parliament in London. And this, of course, I think all of this has basically been caught on from the uh, movie V for Vendetta. And it's 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 yeah, cut on like wildfire. What what's your take on this? And what's your how do you interpret some of these symbols that we're getting through these new revolutionary movements right now? Well, you know, I appreciate. I think what it's doing, it's playing on the the longing of the peoples of the world, the people that, generally speaking, the regular, normal, everyday person in the street is frustrated and angry because he knows that the world that he lives in is corrupt and evil. And so I think there's a lot of, of of unrest in the world today with governments and with institutions. And so it's a fertile field. All you need to do is get somebody out there like a Martin Luther King or, or someone who is articulate and can lead a group. Uh, and, and it's a very fertile field out there because people know that the world we live in is corrupt. And so there's a lot of anger and a lot of resentment and, uh, and frustration. But on the other hand, I'm, I also watch the words, the terms, the symbols that are used by these groups, and I appreciate their, them, you know, demonstrating for what they feel is bad about society. But all the time, I'm also well aware that the symbols, the words, the terms. Uh, the catchphrases that are being used by these movements are all purely Marxist-Leninist, communist stuff, Nazis, fascism. Uh, and so it's the, the people are being misled by, uh, by political hacks and people in, in power using the frustration of the people. So I mean I I understand the the uh, the the anger and the resentment that the people in the Occupy movement have. I sure. totally agree. But uh, but on the other hand, I know also that the symbols and the words and the terms that are used are come directly out of Marxist-Leninism. 
So that's why I'm not too impressed with any of it. It's a uh, it's a red flag for you, I guess. I mean, what's happening under Obama right now in in oh, America uh, and everything? You know, you've you've detailed that about the rising sun and everything. And these are they're you know invoking very very powerful symbolism here. That's right, but it's very ancient, and anyone who studies uh, uh, these these ancient symbols over many years and and study all of these ancient secret societies and fraternal orders and and military and religious orders um, and realizes that the whole world operates under underground. So, you know, the real stuff that's going on, you'll never see. You'll never hear anything about it. And um, so I've been looking at this kind of thing for over 50 years, and it's very obvious to me what's going on. I know where, I know where it's all come from. I know where we are now, and I damn well know exactly where we're going in the future. I can see it. I already know where we're going. And it's frightening to me, but but at 72 years old, I know I'm not going to be here much longer. And I've done the best I could to awaken my fellow man. But I'm also at a very big disadvantage because I, I, am, not, I am not going to be able to tell publicly the things I would like to say. There Why not? Is so I would love to be able to actually tell my fellow man in America, but I am frightened to death of my government. I am frightened to death of, of, of Washington, D.C., and so I know way more than I will ever be able to tell because I don't want to be arrested at 3 o'clock in the morning and, and, and taken to a warehouse and tortured and find my body in, a, in an alley somewhere uh, because that's what happens in America. If you talk too much, this is America. And, uh, and you know, land that are free and home of the brave, well, like Dick Gregory said, you're not free or brave. You better watch your mouth. So um, I, there's just so much I would love to be able to tell uh, the the public that I know, but I I will never be able to do that, and no, that's uh, why I'm on any of your big radio shows. All right, no uh, no words on the way um, out, so to speak. I mean, it, this is is this something you've uh, you know you've you've collected over the years, of course, and and it's something you you've been you, you know basically waiting for to 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 tell about. Shouldn't there be an opportunity for you to do that at some point? I mean, I think so. No, no. No, I don't think so. I, I've been, I've, I've, I've been asked that, and I've been told that in private. Radio talk show hosts have called me and say, you know, we know that you're holding back stuff. We know that you, that you are not telling us the, the, you know, the, the whole story that you know. And I tell them that's exactly right. That's precisely right. And I'm not about to. And, and as each day goes on, I am even more and more convinced I am not about to tell the stuff I really know. Not now. Not now. Uh, for many good reasons. I've got some very good reasons. And uh, so... All right. Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's, I, mean, I feel bad about that. Sure. I, I'm, I'm, I, I know and I see things and I'm aware of things which are going on but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's so far out of out of control that I'm not going to be able to able to do anything about it. And here's another thing to keep in mind: uh, on one of the major radio talk shows in America has called me a couple or three times, and they said we'd like to have you on, but we know that you're holding back and you're not you're not talking about the stuff that that we want to hear. And I quickly came back and said, "Listen, think about this for a minute." Uh, you want your audience to hear to hear something really interesting and something really tantalizing, uh, and so I could I could go out and tell you all kinds of things uh, that would be really explosive, very explosive stuff that I know, and I can prove it, uh, and and that way it would be a great show. Uh, people would love it. It was uh, very very interesting, and, and it was, you know. But after the show is over, a week from now, people will have totally forgotten all about it and gone back to work and forgot all about it. But me, I'm in trouble now. You know, as you know, 
Now I've got the one. I'm the one that's going to pay the price for shooting my mouth off and talking about something while the public was entertained. I'm now going to jail. I'm now going to be. Uh, you know, I now have to worry and look over my my shoulder everywhere I go. Now I have to worry about being kidnapped or tortured or or put in prison or put in jail. Are they going to find some narcotics in my car and I'm going away for 30 years in prison? Why? Because I talk too much in public. I know what's going on. I'm not about to talk about the things I would love to and I've wanted to all my life. I don't even want to do it anymore, even in private. Even in private, when people come around to talk to me in private, I still don't tell them what, I, what I've what i seen and what I've been a witness to. I have, I've actually... I have a I have a suggestion for you, Jordan, if if you don't mind. Um, and and of course, I, I hate sitting here talking about uh, you know you not uh, being part of this and being able to talk to you anymore. It's it's very discomforting. But but nonetheless, since we're on that topic, we're talking about uh, maybe a day when you won't you know be here with us anymore. And and why not write it down or or let's say record it and and keep it a secret, but just enough to be able to tell someone of where they could find find the recording or find the. Uh, the uh, the paper or what have you that shares and details some of this uh, you know with us. If I trusted, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind uh, sitting for an afternoon and just talking about all the things that I really would like the people to know. Um, but I would be I would be frightened and fearful that if it ever got out while I'm still alive. Uh, I would go. To, I'd be in prison overnight. Aren't there, there those um, boxes, I guess, safety deposit boxes that could be uh, released by a will after the fact, and and that way someone would have it? I know. Again, it's it sounds horrible to talk about this, but you you know what I'm getting at here, right? Of course, of course. I, I, obviously, yeah, I know. Um, it is a big problem because the longer the the more I just sit quietly and watch, the the worse it gets, and I've I've. You know, I'm aware of that uh, of that um, saying that um, all evil needs to succeed is enough good men doing nothing. That's right. And yeah. I understand that. But I feel I've done the best I could and, and, and still keep my head and still not be murdered and, left, and found dead in an alley somewhere. Uh, I've already been threatened by government. I've already had threats against my life. I've already had threats over the years. Uh, so I, at, at 72 years old, I don't feel like, you know, speaking to power. I don't feel like confronting power and confronting, uh, powerful people who are mentally disordered and will kill you at a drop of a hat. Uh, that's what we've got. Sure. And sure. that's where we yeah. are. And so, uh, you know, it's like going on the radio publicly and talking about the mafia. Yeah, yeah. And giving names and you know, and and giving names, addresses, and phone numbers, and uh, and giving all kinds of private and personal information that you're privy to. Well, you better have your own army. You know, um, you know, you better leave town. You better leave the country. Well, well Jordan, this, this one thing I just want to mention about this as well, and and at least from my own personal, um, from my point of view. Uh, what you've what you've given you know me what you've given us and and I think many people who are listening to this right now as well who followed your work throughout the years and, and everything else is is a is a very an extremely valuable um, you know thing and, and an aspect that has to do with a way of of, of thinking um, of of opening up one's eyes to a bigger uh, reality. I'm not talking about the things that are. Uh, you know that I have to agree with you on one hundred percent, or the matter if you are one hundred percent factually oh, correct oh. on every point. That, that's oh. not the that's not the point here. What I'm trying to get to is the the esoteric ideas, the occult ideas, when it comes to uh, seeing relationships between symbols, even uh, etymology, the the words, how they relate to each other. These are uh, ideas that have opened up. And I mean, I know this radio show wouldn't exist probably if it wasn't for the work you've done throughout the years. And I think a lot of websites and a lot of other shows out there as well, uh, you know, could could say the same on, on, on this. And therefore, it's incredibly valuable what you've already has done. And it's tremendous. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I want to show you some gratitude for what you've done uh, already. And, and for me, anyway, it's not here that I'm waiting and, and saying, hey, well, why, haven't you, why haven't you done more for us, Jordan? You know, <laughs> so that's not what this is about at all. 
Well, I appreciate it, and I thank you for that. And uh, yeah, it's 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 been a long, hard road. And uh, <clears throat> there was a time when I started out back in 19. I actually really got into this about 1960, 61, <clears throat> and I was always very zealous and really was intrigued with all the dark stuff that I was encountering. And for some reason, uh, for some reason, I was able to be in the company of and meet all kinds of interesting people that, that, that you know, ordinarily you would never meet. I was in, I was in the company of mafia guys and politicians uh, scientists, physicists, uh, writers, researchers, politicians, as I said, and um, <clears throat> secret societies and fraternal orders. And I, I was just, I, I, I was amazed at all the different kind of people that I, I ended up being in the company of. It was as if I was being drawn to them or they're being brought to me. I don't realize, I mean, I don't know how to explain it. But almost every day I was meeting somebody who was really strange and interesting, who was involved in some dark stuff. And uh, I'm talking about when I'm 18, 19, 20 years old. And so all my life I've been able to be in the company of incredibly uh, people, incredible people, doing extraordinary stuff. And uh, and I learn from them. I'm, I'm not learning to be like them, but I'm learning subjects that most people don't even know exist. That's right. Hmm. And so what I wanted to do was at least make people aware of the subjects uh, without getting myself thrown into prison or hurt or causing other people trouble. And that's another thing, too, because right. when I learned something from someone, uh, you know, the powers that be, when they hear me talking about it, they're going to know somebody talked to me and they're going to know who it was and that person's going to be in trouble. So I have to watch what I say too because I don't want to get someone else in trouble who confided in, in me. Uh, so sure. I've been very, very blessed to meet a lot of interesting people in my life and learn things and, and begin to look at the whole world from a totally, totally different point of view. Well, that's where I think, Jordan, you've, you've done so well. You haven't, uh, if I can put it this way, uh, you, you know, held the individuals you talked to in the hand and walked them through the door. You've rather showed them where the doors are or how many different ones there are and basically just, uh, you know, sparked the curiosity, at least for me. That's what you've done with your work and, and, and made me realize how much it actually is out there to look into and, and, and all these tidbits that, you know, you've collected, as you say, throughout the years. And I also believe on top of that, there is a, well, I guess a, a, a force in, in nature or in our world that actually is, you know, guiding our individual journey. And, and that's a force that also want to see much of the, these hidden things come to light. And yeah. therefore, it's why you have been shown some of these things, I believe. I, I, for some reason, I have been in, uh, in, in, in the company of extraordinary people. I, I, I've met some of the most powerful people in the world. Um, and, and been in their company, and I didn't realize at the time who they were, but we got along just great. And I, I liked them, they liked me, and, and we became good friends, uh, and, and I never questioned. I don't question who, you know, who a person is. If they, they're being nice to me, I'm nice to them. And then I find out who they are, and it's shocking. And I'm thinking, my, my God, you mean that's who I was in the company of? And uh, but then I, I look back on all of these different kinds of people that I, I've known and and had experiences uh, with, and I, I'm just amazed how much the world just does not know what's going on. Uh, so I've tried to awaken my fellow man and do it in such a way that uh, just pique their curiosity and make them make people want to study and learn and, and open up their minds. Because like I say, your mind's like a parachute. doesn't work if it's not open. Yeah. I've tried to do that. Because I, you know, I'll tell you one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I have dedicated my life to doing this. It's because when I was a child, I always wanted, really sincerely wanted to know. 
I was extremely curious about everything. And I was very methodical in my wanting to know. I would ask uh, methodical questions of, of, of the adults around me, trying to get to the bottom of, of, uh, of a subject. And, <clears throat> there, and as I grew up in my teen years, I, I, I came across many different speakers, teachers, lecturers uh, that I could go to to hear speeches and lectures by people that were talking about the things I was interested in. And I was always so appreciative. I don't care if the people were, or were wrong or, or not. I was always appreciative to be able to go and hear someone tell, talking and telling me and explaining to me things about the occult world, about history, about commerce, about religion, things that I was interested in, I really wanted to know, and thank God there were people out there who were open to talk to me and tell me the things that I wanted to know. So I wanted to turn around and do the same thing for other people who are like me, who want to know. So I wanted to turn around and, and do the same thing, provide for people who want to know. Uh, where to go to look for the information. Yeah. Well, so you've done it really well, uh, Jordan, I think. So thank you for that. I do it. No. Do you but, think, uh, uh, just to to you know raise that point again here, do, but do you think, though, Jordan, that these subjects and a lot of things that you know we're into that we talk about on this program that you've been talking about throughout the years, is that for the masses? Is it, is it going to be something that you know every everyday Joe on the street uh, gets? Do you think? No, oh, no, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I, I'm I'm now convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that this kind of information is on a need to know basis, and that you don't decide. Um, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. When I say you don't decide to do anything, I am totally believe in the presence of God, so to speak. I don't use that term very often, but I do believe in the presence of the Spirit. And I think that the Spirit draws you to the Spirit, to knowledge. And if the Spirit does not want you knowing it, it won't, it won't draw you to it. So it's, it's almost as if there is some kind of a higher intelligence in the universe that looks at all of us and decides according to your heart and according to your in, in your real spiritual self uh, the legitimacy of your spiritual longings and if it sees that you really are sincere and wanting to know then it will Provide for you that knowledge. I mean, that was how the scripture says, knock and it will be opened. Seek and you will find, and ask and it will be given, implying that uh, you have to really sincerely want to know, not just be interested uh, to be entertained, you know, for the sure. moment, but you really are seeking knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Well, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And therefore, if you really sincerely want to know, the Spirit, God, so to speak, the Spirit will see to it that you will learn what it is that you want, that you're looking for. Without what you're longing to know about, it will show you. Knock and it will be open. Seek and you will find. You know, ask and it will be given. Yeah. Well, I always wanted to know. I, I would I, I I spent my whole life you know sitting in libraries and writing books. I used to write letters continually. I had written so many letters all around the world. I used to write to governments, to to organizations, societies, fraternal orders. I used to write to the, the Soviet government, to the Chinese government. I used to write letters to all these different uh, governmental agencies in Peru and Argentina and Germany and uh, I was fascinated getting back the letters, official letters from from uh, from governments answering my uh, my request and every time they were always very very cordial, very respectful and thanking me for for my interest in their country and and this symbol or that symbol or, or you know whatever it was I was looking at. 
and it was kind of like a real head trip for me. You know, I just loved it. I loved <laughs> writing uh, paternal orders in Germany and England and asking them, why do you use this? Why do you use that? And what right. is the implication? And uh, it, was a, it was fun doing that. I don't consider it to be fun anymore. I mean, I've been there and I've done that and it's over. But um, today, of course, with the with the web, my God, you can do all kinds of you know, research now. And that's another crazy thing is the fact that today so much is available on the web for research and people are even more stupid than what they were when I was doing. <laughs> Isn't that yeah. interesting? Yeah, it's true. More information, yeah. overload, and then more people just shut down, I guess. Huh? Absolutely. And their minds are shut down and nobody knows anything. And it's all right there in front of you. All you've got to do is think to ask the question. That's right. Well, that's exactly. That's a good point. You have to have the the uh, the uh, the curiosity there. You have to have the uh, the intelligence to, to compose the question. You know, if you can't ask it, right. there are some tremendous and magnificent right. answers at our disposal here, you know. Right there in front of you. But uh, you just didn't ask the right question. Yeah. <laughs> now, Jordan, so, yeah, f finish up that point, uh, by the way. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I, 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 I've always understood that that uh, that if you want to know, it's out, it's out there. So when when I hear people say, "Well, I, I've often wondered about this and that," I said, "Well, why don't you do some research and find out about it?" I mean, if you can read, That's right. all you got to go to the library and read a book. I mean, instead of just mouthing that, you know, you'd like to know about this, why don't you actually read about it, study it, so that you know. I, I'm the first one to always say, I don't know, uh, I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. And never have been an authority on anything. But I have always loved wisdom and knowledge. And, and I find now, when I'm asked to speak in universities and colleges, and, and I've been on the platform in, in large universities with other uh, speakers, and people in the audience are throwing questions, uh, I feel confident that you know I've done my homework. I know what I'm doing, and uh, I and if I have opinions. Well, you know, it's just my opinion. But if you ask me what I think, I'll tell you what I think, and I'll tell you why I think it. Um, so I'm always willing to uh, to share with an audience what my thoughts are because I've I've spent my whole life pursuing dark subjects and dark knowledge and I've been in the company of people who know and so uh, I just found it to be very interesting and today of course is very depressing because so much I would love to be able to tell I can't now and we you know we've talked about that mm -hmm. already but yeah well that's it's, it's very yeah. unfortunate and I, and I hope um, you know that you well, in one regard, do you change your mind or, or think about the, some of the ideas that I mentioned to you, that there are ways to disseminate this information uh, after the fact you don't have to be in a position where you, you're afraid, you know, to, uh, to to share with it with the world. But that, that's ultimately your decision. It's it's your life and it's your, uh, you know, knowledge in that, in that regard. But, I mean, overall, I mean, I've, I very much appreciate the work that you've done. And I think you made a tremendous contribution to 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 the ideas of of you know finding answers about these esoteric occult and symbolic you know subjects that that uh, you know I as well have been so interested in over the years. So I I appreciate your work very much. Now, listen, well, to Jordan. Before we before we take a break here in a few minutes, um, I want to just talk a little bit about your website here so that we can uh, make sure we give, give out the correct one. And you can mention how much you want to about that, of course. But let's make sure we have uh, the, the correct URL so people know where to go to to find it. First of all, Jordan. Well, I'll tell you what, let me give you my my email and my phone number. Um, I'm always oh, I'm always uh, interested to have people uh, call me or, or email me. I'm always, I try always to make myself available to everyone on the phone and, uh, and answering. I, I live by myself and I have no, no help. So, you know, I can't answer all the emails, but I do the best I can. Uh, but if you want to email me, it's... Jordan Maxwell at gmail dot com, but the but the Jordan does not have an A. Ordinarily, it would be J O R D A N, but there is no A in my email, so it's J O R D N Maxwell at gmail dot com, and my phone number is eight one eight five one four six two nine four. 
That's 818 in Los Angeles, 818-514-6294. So you can email me or call me. I'll try and get back to you and um, because I try and make myself available to everyone because I was always uh, I was always appreciative of people that I wanted to talk to that I had heard on the radio or attended a lecture and I wanted to talk to them and when they would take the time to talk with me and help me I always appreciated that very much and so that's what I want to do I want to be able to make myself available to anybody who you know, as best I can <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's really good that you can uh, that you can do that or you want to do that of course and and uh, uh same here I wish I could t- talk to everybody there's just not there's just not time that's that's the bottom line it nothing right. would be done you know. No, you're right. You're right. That is difficult too because there is a, a shortage of time and I'm already I'm 72 years old and I tell people all the time uh I I know I'm not here to entertain anyone. Sure. So I uh, I don't want to have people calling me because they uh, they want to sit and shoot the breeze and chit chat. Because I I'm 72 and I don't have time to chit chat. I don't have time. You know, uh, time is of the essence for me. I mean, there's so much I want to do and um, would you know and need to do and want to do. I just don't have the time, but I always try to make myself available. Okay, so. well, that's really good. Well, well, we'll ask people to respect that when you do contact Jordan on the details he just gave out. That you're uh, concise and, and to the point, of course, and, and have something direct to, to talk about, and you can get in contact there. Now, do, do you want to mention uh, your, uh, your URL as well for the website that we talked about before? Well, uh, you know what? Uh, <clears throat> see, my, uh, my website that I've had for so many years... It's no longer in my uh, it's no longer in my care. Uh, my webmaster took it from me, so I, I don't have it anymore. And uh, so I been you know I don't have anything anymore. It's all been taken from me. So I do have a new website for a radio show that I'm kind of thinking about doing. And so we put a website up for it. It's called the Jordan uh, and not not the it's just Jordan Maxwell Show. Um, but that's it's really just a just a uh, a, a home page. There's nothing on it. Uh, we we put it together for a possible radio show in the future. But um, if you wanted to talk with me at all, the best way to do that is email me because I I live on my computer. I you know I I'm not I don't go anywhere, so I live on the computer. So I get my emails continually during the day, and I try and answer them. And again, it's jordanmaxwell at gmail.com, and the Jordan does not have an A. So just email me, and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, and when I, get my, when I get my website back from the people who stole it from me, uh, I, then I'll let the world know I'm back on track again and have my website back. Mm. And then, uh, you know, then, then I can do a lot more. Right now, I can't do anything <laughs> worse. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, and I remember when I was growing up, I used to always hear, uh, "Well, there are two things that we don't talk about in polite company, and that's religion and politics." Yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, and I I always thought to myself, "Why? Those are the two things that that cause people to do the things they do is religion and politics. Why not talk about the religion and politics? Because." Those are the two things that motivate the world. Well, now, of course, I understand why we don't talk about religion and politics, because one, uh, it, it might cause people to start thinking, and God knows we don't want that. And two, uh, we don't want people even discussing such issues. And so that's why we're given plenty of in, uh, entertainment and ball games and all kinds of uh, you know computer games and just entertainment galore. We got all kinds of entertainment and distractions so that people don't sit down too long in one place and start thinking too deeply about anything. So, so it's pretty obvious. It is pretty obvious, and and I wonder how much of these things are, uh, you know, psyops if we can call them that, or they're they're dropped in into our into the mass consciousness in different things. I mean, I'm thinking back of this. Article the NASA released uh, in, in, back in the 70s, I think it was about planet. You must always have a crisis 
uh, coming. You must always have something that's that's uh, imminent. Some terrible crisis is going to happen uh, because it keeps the people on their toes, keeps people agitated, yeah. and, uh, and and keeps them off off balance because they don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So they they can't get organized. They can't uh, you know live in peace and prosperity and and quietness so that they can think and plan and understand what's going on. Just keep them occupied with worrying themselves sick about the end, about the media's going to hit or comets going to hit or world war or something. Keep them occupied so that they're always concerned. And that way they don't have time to sit down quietly and just think about what's actually going on. And so um, I, I, I kind of figured that anyway, but hearing her talk about that, <clears throat> so that's that's pretty much what I feel is going on all the time. Is we're just being played for fools. And um, yeah, you, uh, and, you're right, Jordan. I mean, I mean, this idea is, is very important to mention that we can see that ref reflected in many different movements. But uh, oh, yeah. the green movement, right. for example, it's very much about don't think, don't, don't, don't. We have to act now. We cannot. This is not the time to argue about what's going on, you know, because then we would, of course, discover what really is going on. <laughs> it's the hex. There was a brown dwarf, uh, you know, st star somewhere out there swirling around, and I just wonder how much that, of course, contributed to the whole Planet X movement, for example. Um, well, I, I know you're right. That's exactly right because uh, all that kind of stuff. Every time you turn around, it's something. Some some terrible tragedy is coming on the earth, and and the only real tragedy is that uh, the American people collectively have got an IQ of 40. That's the only real tragedy, and nobody's questioning anything. There's a real tragedy there. That's right. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of horrible things that have happened, but uh, you know, December 21st wasn't one of them. Now, what if we look at the deeper aspects of that? Uh, obviously, the, the most important point is what you just kind of mentioned, that, that people are occupied, we're being uh, entertained for, for different reasons. We are not allowed to settle down and think for ourselves. Of course, if we did take personal responsibility, we could just, uh, you know, turn off the TV or even turn off the Internet in these days um, and, and try to find uh, some some real truth, some real uh, balance. We, we know that we're being played on different ways, but how do you do, how do you manage the balance between the curiosity of want to try to find out what really is going on. Hence, you have to watch the news, you have to watch the web, but at the same time, kind of keep your distance to it. I think this is something that's very difficult for people, Jordan. Well, it, it, <clears throat> for me, it's the, you know, all riled up about something. And uh, so I said, basically, I don't see anything happening for Y2K at all, nothing. And that was my same feeling. I've, I've been on a couple of shows just before... Uh, December, and I said the same thing. I didn't think anything was going to happen. Um, <clears throat> I think that everybody is looking in the wrong place. I think some momentous things have happened, but uh, but you know, December 21st was not it. <clears throat> I think some terrible, horrible things have happened, but uh, uh, the end of the world. I don't think uh, you know. I don't. I understand what the the concepts of the end of the world, the end of time, and all that kind of thing, but most of that is all fluff and religion. And and as far as I'm concerned, this last stuff was going on about the Mayan calendar. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there was a lot of CIA handiwork in that, just to stir up the the pot a little bit and scare people a little more, keep them keep them occupied. I remember many years ago hearing a lady who was an official with the Democratic Party, and she was um, telling us that um, that she taught people, <clears throat> and that she was taught, and then she turned around and was teaching new people coming into the Democratic Party as officials, that you must always, uh, it was an idea of the Democratic Party said, back in 1999, uh, German national television sent over a film crew from Germany uh, and, and did a, <clears throat> a, an hour show on me. And the, the show was basically, and it was all translated into German. I, I have a copy of it, but, uh, and, but um, the show was basically, they were asking me, what did I think was going to happen with Y2K? 
uh, this was in 90, 1999, that was going to be shown in the last part of 1999. And I basically said back then, concerning Y2K, <clears throat> that nothing was going to happen. That, uh, that the only thing that might change was that football might come on on uh, Monday night instead of Sunday night, <laughs> and that uh, the taxes will for sure go up, and the rich will get richer, and the poor will get poorer. But basically, nothing's going to change. Uh, and I thought, and I said that I think that this hype about Y2K is probably being orchestrated by NSA, National Security Administration, and or the CIA, uh, just to see how. Uh, gullible the American public is, and to see how much uh, of a of an impact the CIA can make on society, to see if they can get society.